Ooh, Phoenix is rising and so are we. Welcome into the PHNX Rising Podcast. Appreciate you guys joining us on a, on a Tuesday. I, I, you know, Chandler, I'm going to be honest, I kind of did rip off your thing. I didn't even realize I'm doing wait, it until wait, now. Wait, what's the rip off thing here? Uh, it, well, I mean, if you'd watch our PH Next Sun Devil show, uh, Shane does... Oh, Oh, it is the bet show. Oh gosh. Well, see, uh, he doesn't even know what he's ripping uh, off across our across our multiple. Uh, programs. Just a, he's just a serial plagiarizer oh. over here, Max Simpson. Thank you. Hey, can we, uh, can we, can we take it from the top? A uh, line? No. Line? No. Check. Okay, we'll try so, this again. So explain. What, three, what are you three, two, one. Hey, welcome into the PH Next Rising Podcast. Appreciate everyone joining us here on a Tuesday. Yeah, vibes are good. We're feeling great. Appreciate everyone. In the chat, I'd be better if Detroit had lost, but you know, yeah, right. that's fair. Yeah. I am, of course, Max David Simpson, and I'm joined by our man, Mr. Owen Evans. How are we Hello. doing, buddy? Yeah, um, it's uh, it's that time again. It's yeah. Open Cup time. Yeah, a lot going on. Not Phoenix Rising yet, but soon we'll be talking about Open Cup later. But um, yeah, Open Cup week. There's you know coming off a win. I, I would say good was pretty stuff. good. Feel, it could be a good. lot worse. Could be a lot worse. We're feeling good. We are feeling good. <laughs> so I think I'm getting, uh, I think I'm getting something's happening. But hey, uh, we got a good show for you guys. You know, it's kind of, kind of going through Saturday's match, and I think kind of going into it, Phoenix Rising. We mentioned right. We, you know, we saw it, seen the thumbnail, trying to make it six points. Those t- uh, two wins in a row. They've gotten the first one done, and I think it was one of those where we kept on saying, I think the story of the season is this team is going to get better. These players come back in the fold especially the defense, even though the defense has been pretty decent. And it really is a testament to our captain, John Stenberg. We're not going to make this the entire John Stenberg game, but really in retrospect, the more I kind of watch back that game, not only the defensive performance where he's clearing out fires, he's leading the line, but really that goal. I mean, it's no secret to change the entire complexion of the match. And it just, it's one of those things, John Stenberg, the man's got an aura. The man's got a presence. It's nice to have him back. It is. It is. And you can tell that by, look, you look at his uh, tackles one, three out of three for for the for this game. Where'd you get where'd you get these uh, stats? These stats, uh, I'm not actually getting them from the Oh, you didn't get the stat like No, I'm not looking at the stat like his stats here. But um, <laughs> I'm actually pulling up the stuff that I've pulled up myself <laughs> here, you know, I... Well, well, we'll have a look at Stat Lucky's. Uh, you want to add Stat Lucky? He's got some other stuff for this. Oh, yeah, sure. I could see him. Stat Lucky Reese, we got some in depth stats for you. Phoenix Rising, right? 17 chances created. Colorado Springs with two. Again, um, we also have Phoenix Rising 1 uh, XG off of 21 shots. Pretty good, right? Considering that one goal, 1 XG kind of evens out. 0.2 XG for Colorado Springs off of four Not shots. Very much. Right. Pretty much, I mean, the big thing is Phoenix Rising was pretty dominant in most of their categories. 66 final third entries compared to 39 for Colorado Springs switchbacks. Um, <clears throat> one good number of duels. Uh, passing the final third, 74% accuracy, 84% accuracy in the opposition half. It's just, I think from this team, we kept on so many times thinking if they can get the final ball in, get the final ball in. And while, yes, we want to see resulting in more goals and everything like that, I think it just goes to show that you they're key, they're still unlocking these combinations, but they're playing in Remy Cabral. They're having things going on. This is now the second game in a row where we've seen Remy Cabral taking it to them. They're making him a focal point. I think this really gives a different complexion to this team. Yeah. No, it does. Um, I still think there are there are elements of this that they've got to they've got to iron out. I think the new formation is interesting. Um I I think it's uh, and again, this is the the one that we can really get into, and I, I'm intrigued. We kind of both agreed, I think, on after watching Saturday that if you had to you'd look at playing Panos Amanakis in this over Definitely. perhaps Fede Varela. And it wasn't that Fede played badly, but it's just that this is... it was one of his is, better games, honestly. It was one of his better games. Okay. There are, but this wasn't getting necessarily the, the best out of the formation by playing Fede over Panos, when Panos is someone who we know is very, very adept at, at kind of weaving through those lines and finding those spaces. And, and especially when you allow him to to float around that little bit more and, and the way that he would be in this formation as opposed to, you know, kind of stuck out wider like he often is when when they play that back three, um, the wing backs and, and the tens are much wider in that kind of formation normally. Um, or at least we've seen uh, Panos play much wider in terms of, I mean, you look at the New Mexico game, he was pretty much entirely on the one side of the field. I don't think he touched the ball mm-hmm. in the other side. Um <laughs> 
kennels. I, I just think that it's it's interesting. It open it would open up more if you were if you were to go down that route. Now, again, I honestly that would probably be maybe the one change I'd make. Yeah. Um, going into this next game, probably. Okay. I'm not sure if I'd make any other change. I'd, I'd wait and see how it works out. Now, different question with Pittsburgh, of course. We'll get into them in the Thursday Ooh. show this week um, in more detail in Pittsburgh and what they offer and what they have and, more importantly, haven't been doing mm. um, this season as they struggle down at the bottom of the table. But I, I just, I, I think there's, a, there's an improvement. I wouldn't get too carried away with it. Yeah. Because, again, still, this was against a team that's been leaking goals. You only get the one. Do you restrict them to not really getting much? Yes. But they sat back and they defended. The question will be then, how long run does this team uh, make it happen against other uh, you know, opponents who might like to sit back and might like to absorb pressure, especially if they can find a goal? And, and knowing, of course, that... Colorado Springs did indeed put the ball in the back of the net, um, even if it was ultimately disallowed. Yeah. Yeah, it was a 1-0 win over a, a team that are right, right around the bottom of the table, and you should probably read into it about that much. Yeah. I mean, it's one I of the... know you want to be positive. Everyone wants to be positive about yeah. it, and I think it was an improvement over some of what we'd seen previously. But there's also still a limit to how positive you can you can be. No, I mean, I think it's one of those we're having a very different discussion. If they don't get it done, it, you beat the team that you're supposed to. It's not always the case. We've seen Rising not do this even as, you know, shit. This season, even last season, it's never a given. So the fact they got it done, fantastic. Get your kudos there. Um, I mean, I do see signs of encouragement. I do see that this offense, I'm not going to necessarily say rounding into form, but there's more of an identity. And I think that's the biggest thing. We didn't see that over the first couple of matches. Um, the fact that you're able to play off of a target man, that you have a bit more dynamism um, and a also, honestly, a little bit more variety that you've been shifting out within the wings, within your different number 10s and the guys within those attacking positions. You've now fluctuated through a few different options within the midfield who's starting in there. I, it, it's it's something that I think this team is still very much coming together. And I think it's only encouraging that even if it's not necessarily reflecting on the score sheet and even in the wins losses, we've known that this is going to be just not a quick fix season no. based on the guys who have been lost, the guys who have come in. You're noticing a theme that we tend to say this every week, multiple times a week. It's because it's true. You know, I think there's always this rush to push panic and to understandably react when the defending champions are not getting business done and totally, totally understandable. But I think you are able to not get overly positive, but take what you can and realize that if we're able to keep on building off our number nine, if we are able to still get guys in a form, and if we're able to get a bit more galvanizing in that final third, these things will come knowing that you have a stud at the back, you have a stud in the, in the box between the sticks, and hopefully the rest will kind of just uh, keep happening. But, and I'll, I'll There's add always a this but. now, but, but after this weekend, Rising will have played five of its home games. Oof. It is playing a vast majority of home games to start the season. Yes. It's playing generally weaker teams. True. So it's one, again, there's a balance to be said there for the fact that, yes, they're positives to take. Of course there are. But things are going to get harder from here on out. They're going to play more difficult sides. They're going to have more travel. I mean, you just look at, uh, there's like a month-long spell, right? Where Rising is going to have to travel to Rhode Island, yep. to Detroit, yep. and to Indianapolis. They're long travel. They're long, long road trips. What's the best away day out of all of those? Uh, probably Rhode Island. Yeah, I reckon. I mean, I, I, that's probably the one I'd go with. Um, Detroit is Detroit. Um, <laughs> Indy is going to be a mess that weekend because it's Indy 500. It's in town. You tempted? The exact same. You're no, tempted. I'm not tempted. I'm not tempted whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I don't <gasps> feel like... I, I'd imagine, you know what, I, I could go and have a look what the prices are. It's probably like sell kidney level of like money probably. Well, you don't money. have the need? For speed. I don't have any... Max, why are you the way that you are? You asked this. Uh, why are you the way that you are? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Reese Re Re in the chat. Time, time to start, start pushing, pushing the, the Wyking midfield, midfield agenda, agenda, Jinx. Why? 
Why? He's sitting over there, so yeah. we can chat this yeah, back. Why, at yeah, us. why? You won't yeah. hear it. We'll repeat what he says. Apparently, Max agreed with it on Saturday. I said it'd be interesting. I don't right, know if I'm going to push the agenda. That's not rational, right? Max has a lot of bad takes. That's okay, give me an argument for it, please. Stop it. He's a Walmart, He's a Walmart brand. brand. Carlos Harvey. No free ads. He's a discount. He's a no free ads. He's a discount. Carlos Harvey. To is be fair, I'm I wouldn't necessarily here. say it's a free ad. It's probably not the most positive of descriptions. Well, <laughs> let's be real. I mean, I mean, no free brands. No free ads. No. Um. Okay. I see, it's what, I see what he's saying, but the thing here for me then is okay. So where's the progression that's already in the back? Um. I don't. I don't also, then, who do you drop? Because Rendo Zambrano, I don't see being dropped. I don't, you, I don't even though, and I don't think you want to drop Julio. I think Julio has looked all right. I agree. I think it's in the number um, ten positions is the one where you need to solidify it a bit more. Yeah, yeah. It's the wide spots and the and the tens. I think really, and even maybe a little bit of the the center forward is to work out yeah. quite what you're trying to get and make sure you work. Brett George out. in the chat said, uh, no white in the midfield. You'll need to drop him when Fuenmayor gets back. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so, so Brett's saying drop okay. white for Fuenmayor. Okay. 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 Let's, okay. let's uh, scroll up a little bit. Kyle, if you wouldn't mind, I just want to read some stuff. Uh, D goal in the chat. The defense has been solid and expected to improve. Midfield has been some par with chance creation a little bit further up. As well, Bandita's Bluebird didn't test the keeper enough on Saturday. We need to be far more aggressive up front on Saturday. Absolutely. And see, there, is, there is a good point to be made here that yes. Rice took 21 shots and only eight of them were on target. It's true. It's true. And well, and you know, I think it's one of those things. Oh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. We've criticized this team for not, uh, you know, for taking too many shots and they're kind of all over the place. We've criticized this team for almost looking for the perfect shot. I do agree we have to test the keeper more, but I think it's. I think even though they weren't getting shots off, they were getting in more threatening positions in the final third inside the box, and they were intentionally looking. That's the biggest thing that I have seen from these last two matches, especially on Saturday, where even if it wasn't coming off, there was a bit of identity with this mm -hmm. team, and that that is not for nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not for mm -hmm. nothing. No. Uh, a little it's bit fine. further up, one more time, Mr. Kyle behind the Mac. A little bit further, a little bit further. We're talking about Colorado Springs. Put a pin in it there. Welsh, AZ, the general. The Blackwells have booked their trip to Colorado Springs. Oh, you're going you're gonna to make the trip, Max? Yeah. I gotta, you're, going, you're going to Colorado Springs? Got to book my flight. you gotta, you got to get that sorted, Max. I'll, uh, I'll give you details of uh, how certain people are planning on flying back from that one. You know, we'll, we'll work things out. No, no, no mention of anyone in particular because no free ads, but... Um... See what you did there. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll coordinate this. Proud of you. But yeah, make sure. Come on, right, everyone. They're on. They're on network TV for that game. Yeah. It's gonna be a very interesting opportunity to to show off what Phoenix Rising is all about. Yeah. Show up. Show up. Also, it's August in Colorado. Sounds pretty Getting nice. Getting out of here, the furnace in August. Don't you want to get out of the furnace? Really, for a weekend? Yes. You kind of do, don't you? I would. Okay. Would, well, Max is sold. Like, Max would... is coming to Colorado. Yeah. Um, Colorado Springs. Let's do it. Come on. Uh -huh. Let's do it. Let's um, do it. Yes. Um, maybe maybe we'll... No promises at all, but maybe if enough people are going, we'll find ways to make it more fun. Oh, I mean, if... Oh, no, we'll definitely make it more fun. We'll, we'll find ways to make it more fun. Yeah. 100%. Hey, Damon, do you want to come to Colorado Springs right. in August? It does sound pretty fun, says Damon. There we go. That's the, that's the endorsement you needed. What? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, that's producer Damon Dog uh, when he's not consumed by PHNX Cardinals. Uh, but uh, hey, it's not a football show. It's a football show. Um, Devin All in the chat. 23 shots mostly came from outside the box. Absolutely. Brett George. Only reason Pano shouldn't be on the field to start someplace. Got three really good reasons. Number one, if he's hurt. Number two, if he's suspended. Or number three, if he's in jail. And Reese says even if he's in jail, we can't put to bail him out. <laughs> Oh, man. I understand that, to be fair. I understand This the, the is... Uh, and it's uh, <laughs> down the chat. Thanos prop, a.k.a. Sai Lee. He's problematic. So, number three might happen. No, no, no. We are not... We're not We're not pushing that agenda here. But uh, anything from this game we do want to push? Anything else that we haven't discussed in depth? I mean, again, overall, there are... There's curves to this. This is not a linear team. This is not going to be a team where you improve game after game and they're getting better. Like, no, there are going to be matches like this where some things improve, some things don't. It's going to be stagnant. It's going to be that type of season, folks. We've already kind of see it. It's going to keep unfolding that way. How are you playing the fullbacks? I know we said about not changing things necessarily, but long term, especially if you stick with this back four, how are you playing the, 
the fullbacks. Mm. Because right now, right, they came out with Motreore. Yeah. And Lawrence Wyke. Wyke wasn't... But then you also yeah. had Gabby Torres and Darius Formella as, like, wingers. Yeah. How are you playing those wide players? Who are you choosing in those wide spots? You know, Motreore has had some up and... And Down don't come in and say Ericsson Gallardo in our chat now, Devonel. <laughs> okay, I'm getting in before you do. I'm getting in before you do. I think Motra- but no, that's actually, you, you can throw his name out there because I, it's a, I, I think Motra has, has had some up and down games. I mean, I think just he's a bit off of his performances. I mean, I'm not saying, I think he's like, he's a, one of the natural ones within that left-sided position. So I think he'd be tougher to replace. Wyke has, has been pretty decent. Um... Listen, I don't hate giving them another run, but also I think the beauty is, is even if you go with a back four, you knowing that you have the flexibility of, let's say you keep either Wyke and or Triari in those positions, you're able to kind of pseudo morph into a back three if you need to. If one guy goes up, you already kind of have those guys playing together of being able to just sit with a back three within the transition. I don't think this is a stagnant, oh, back four, guys can't go forward. There is a bit of fluidity to this. What does this mean for Rito and Azaka? Power Rito. I mean, I want to see him back. I don't. I. I don't. I'm surprised that he was out of the starting lineup. I mean, to me, even though but he's... here's the thing, right? Again, it's the fact that he's not really a a, a defensive fullback. That's not who he is. It's not how they've asked him to play. True, but it's not who he is really at his heart. Yeah, so right. I mean, what would you do? You'd have to replace. Uh, you'd have to replace one of the wide players up top, really. With you would. I mean, and I. Hmm. That's a and tough Azucar, one. I think is very similar. He is. I, I, to me, to me, I think while they give you different different things, they're like they're, they're different in how they move about the field. Pa- uh, Power Rito is very much a north and south guy. Azakar can give you a bit of mixing in again, as I mentioned, of being able to cut inside, kind of masquerade between that number ten and out wide role. But I think what they both give you is they're very direct players. They're less about maybe just trying to give it an assist and more so about like they want to create shots, they want to create chances, um, and they're they're. This is not a disrespect to them. I think they're, while they can put in a shift, they're less likely to just do a lot of the hard effort. And it's not because they can, it's not for a lack of ability. It's just, I think how they're positioned, you bring them on to say, hey, you guys are in here to create chances and get goals. And we will allow you to maybe not get back as much and play those defensive positions. Yeah, no, I think that's fair enough. I think that's fair enough. But we'll see. I don't know. It's going to be, yeah. it's going to be interesting. I, I think, what, I think there's a lot of room to maneuver. This really interesting here. Oh yeah if he wants something, is the fact that Max is currently looking. He's so excited about Colorado Springs. Dude, don't tell the people. He's actually looking at an unnamed air travel uh, provider's <laughs> website. I'll th- tell you afterwards, Max. I'll tell you what, what people no, no, booked no, it's on. Just my yeah. It's just my ADHD. Uh, okay. That's all. Okay. Uh, okay. But no, it's... Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of lot of room to maneuver within this team, and I don't know. It's, he's so excited about Colorado Springs away. He's so, Look at him. Look at him. He's so excited. He's so excited. He hasn't been this excited since he bought everyone beers in Charleston and it cost him a fortune. Uh- <laughs> Wait, so you did admit to me buying beers? Uh, yo, I've always said you bought beers in Charleston. That's right. You did buy beers in Charleston, to be fair. Yeah. Man of the people. I got a... I got a He's a man of the people now. I have a, I have a kit. I have a kit that I have to wear. But uh, mm. yeah, um, you know, I, I, I am pretty excited. For Colorado Springs away. Almost excited is when I talk about our friends... Oh, you love talking and about Arizona lottery. Oh, Arizona, Arizona lottery. Arizona lottery. Arizona lottery. They're a good time. I love yeah. talking about Arizona Phoenix lottery. Rising won last yeah. weekend. Could you win? I mean, you know, I can't win How them all. How could you win? I can't win them all. How could you win, Max? Oh, well, by playing the AZ Adventure program. Oh, oh wow, oh. wow, wow. Would you look at that? The AZ Adventure program, there are three ways to play. Number one, you can scratch off three of their iconic landscapes. You got the Cacho Peak, Monument Valley, and Camelback Mountain. Have prizes up to $50,000. I win $50,000. Maybe not come on this podcast for a week. No, I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm only not on this podcast when I have obligations, uh, such as hiking in 10 of geolocated adventures, anywhere from Flagstaff to Yuma. Uh, yeah, you can go to visit azadventure.com, checking out those locations, and have the opportunity to win prizes up to $1 million in How cash in Arizona. Million? $1 million. $1 million. That's have you Have you put the thought figures. into who you would buy uh, as a player for Phoenix Rising with $1 million? You know, I did say... I'd, uh, I, I did say I'd come back uh, on, a, on on Tuesday. Um, we're talking like in the USL. Well, presumably someone that you'd actually would actually come to the team. Hmm. You know, I like. Uh, ooh, you know, I think would be really good for a little USL. My man, uh, James Madison Spurs. Give him a million. How about that? 
Boom. You think he'd sign for a million? Uh, you know, I'll throw, I'll throw, I'll throw in an old Arizona lottery ticket for hand. That'll do it over. Win you, another million. Visit acadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win one million dollars in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Um, you know, if if that's not doing it, if that's not doing it for you for to sign James, what? What do you got? What do you want? No, 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 no. Right, right, wrap it up a minute so we can rope Damon in here. Come on. Oh gosh, look at Damon. Damon in his sinister grin. I bet he's grinning from ear to ear because he just had a Circle K. Polar Pop, I bet he got one from the Inner Circle program as he's nodding along. Circle K, proud partner of Phoenix Rising, also of the Arizona Cardinals, which Damon masquerades into doing many of the things. But right, he also masquerades and drinking a Polar Pop from Circle K. Got it from the Inner Circle program again. As I've already freaking mentioned, you can get one today by signing up for the Inner Circle program. All you need is a phone number. Download the Circle K app. Hit that phone number in there. Inner Circle program, bing, bang, boom. You get a chance to win. Uh, well, you don't get a chance to win. You get your first five fill-ups, 25 cents off per gallon. You then get three cents off every gallon, and then you can even get up to five cents per gallon. Your boy gets five cents off per gallon because I love Circle K. I love Circle K. They got the pizza, the coffee, Money. the ice-cold fountain drinks. It's fantastic. Literally, I was parched after the podcast. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to hit made up Circle K for a victory polar pop. You can do so today. Again, terms and conditions do apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. So, uh, Damon, do you want to swing on in here a minute? I feel like we need you to repeat. Come around right between us here and just repeat I'm, I'm actually to the people. I'm up for uh, the Gassino contest on the Circle K Inner Circle app. Right Damn, Damon, I don't there think I've ever, I don't think I've ever been. I don't know. But what, what was that? I've, I've never been more proud of you. See as well, Damon. Come on, come on, come I'm down. Sorry, hey, we got Damon over here. There. So Damon, uh, just yeah. You know, what what was it you had to say to to Max there? Um, I was just saying that Max admitted that Spurs is you know first or second best player is USL level. He just said that live on air in front of He kind of did, didn't he, to be fair? He I did. I said I would like him to he play. Did, he That'd equated cool. Tottenham Hotspur you, with the USL team. Owen specifically stated someone that would presumably sign for a USL club. And your first oh. response was James Madison. Yeah. Who's your second best player <laughs> on your yeah. whole team. I mean, yeah, I think he, he maybe takes a vacation. Maybe it's USL a way to level. keep up me, a way to keep up finish. Spurs, yeah. I mean, to be fair, if I was at Spurs, I'd want to leave too. I mean, yeah. Spurs and Rising. I mean, oh, Rising won a trophy more recently, so I mean, yeah, it's true. That's, that's, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. That said, you know, if Harry tough. Kane came over here, maybe he wouldn't win here either. You know, I mean, it's we've seen that happening over in Germany, huh? I don't want that. Um, uh, thank you, uh, producer Damon. Get the hell out of here. Uh, <laughs> all right, we talked about it. We talked about players coming to Rising. Um, you know. We're going to get into in in further on Thursday, right? Uh, that it's a pivotal match on Saturday. All that fun jazz. I guess I'm trying to think, like, I, I how where are we kind of at within rising season? You know, let's kind of talk about some things from a high level, right? This defense is coming into form. Still have guys coming back. I'm not asking for grades. I'm not asking for ratings. But just kind of talk through it with me. Chat, please chime in as well. We're going to kind of break this down. We're going to go a little bit of every level. Start a goalkeeper. Yep. Rocker Rios Novo. Yep. How we feel he's been doing has been up to his usual stuff. I mean, yeah, it's Rocker. Cool. Rocker has been Rocker. That's honestly all that I have I wanted mean, for this. It's not much fan, more. No, fantastic. That, that's all There's I have wanted for this. There's not much more to add on no, that. Rocker that's, that's, that's has great been thing. Rocco this season. The man is just different. Um, it's honestly impressive, I think, sometimes when you see the way that he manages to, to keep his team in these games yes. um phoenix rising have they been good defensively yes I, I won't argue that whatsoever yeah has he been very instrumental in keeping uh yeah keeping goals out effectively and keeping his team in the games yeah I see, absolutely i see d goal in the chat rocco has been rocco solid that's pretty good that's pretty good oh my there. God. Yeah, I know. Um, not, not, not paraphr- That's that's I'm, shameful. Shouts that lucky Reese. I'm not I'm, from off screen. I'm not, I don't disagree. I'm, that's I'm not. Oh. That's what, that's what D goalie said. Oh, oh, sorry. Rock solid. Oh, oh my bad. Maybe, maybe I was paraphrasing. Whoopsies. Um, Rock has been. Whoopsie daisies. Um, oh, there's no way I would do something like that. Oh um, no. <laughs> All right. Oh, what are we doing here, Max? What are you... 
I guess no, that Starlucky like Reese is just walking out right now. Sorry, I thought that. That's how bad. This okay, my has bad. Been. I thought that joke was a keeper. All right, we're oh! done. <laughs> oh. No. Okay. Right. I'm. I'm. I'm on the brink of just walking out myself right okay, now. That one, I guess, okay. That one. Okay. That What? That one didn't save it for you. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> These are terrible. <laughs> uh, Stop it. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, I guess I. Oh, ah, yeah, you just said an own goal. Nice, nice. Okay, fine. What are we doing here? Okay, I guess I guess all of this. I'm, Max, I don't, don't want to get fined. I don't want to penal. I get incurred a penalty. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyway, that's plenty of Rocco oh, talk uh, and puns and everything like that. Let's move on to the defense. Actually, no, I will, I will add one more. You more. Rocco, uh, uh, one fourth more. highest in the league at the moment in um, expected goals prevented. By the way, it's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. She's uh, pretty darn good. Again, considering that a lot of Rising's matches have been pretty. I'm not going to say snooze fest isn't the right word, but like it's not like they've had a ton of goals against and a lot of the like outside of the Tulsa match. Like it's been a pretty steady. Uh, steady performance by Rocco and with his defense, which leads us to the back line. A lot of guys who have been in flux, guys coming back into the team, John Stenberg, notably, we've started Pat Mar Boy, who has been pretty consistent throughout the entire time. Again, what he lacks to be desired in maybe the passing range more than it has made up for within his defensive coverage. Um, you have Wyke, who has been within that. You have that Triore. You have Fuenmayar coming back. How do we feel about the defense? Are we, you know, how are we feeling about the guys coming back? What's the vibe of the defense? I think, and this is the thing, right? We we talk a lot about um, the defense being good, and I understand that, and I agree, broadly speaking, they've been decent. However... Oh, gosh. There's always a however, a but with you. They're very mid-table, if not, like, slightly lower half of the table in terms of expected goals against. So they are giving up opportunities. A large part of it is okay. Rocco's keeping them in it. Um, I mean, how much you read into that, of course, is always a, you know, a kind of mixed bag, but there's still plays there. Now, Pat Boy, I understand, again, people people are really big fans of him for good reason. He's easy. He's, he's, he's got a roof solid. for uh, very mobile centre back, decent with the ball at his feet, and he's young, um, and that's the important thing there, right? That means that there's potential there, and the hope is, I think, if if you're Phoenix Rising, and to be honest, if you are Pat my boy, is at the end of this season you're looking at making an exit, yeah, and you're looking at making an exit overseas that's gonna bank some cash. I say, Pat Mar, um, yeah, no, he's uh, Pat Mar. He's this is the thing, right? Mm -hmm. US Ali is very mm -hmm. much beat. Coming that that shop window, um, sure. we've seen teams do it using that. Um, look, I think they're they're a, a decent enough team in terms of yeah you know, their notoriety within this league and of course outside of this league to an extent. Um, and USL is on the map. We've seen that with the moves that Louisville and Orange County have been able to make. Um, hey, he's an LJ, big fan of the boy. Hey. Oh my god can we stop what can we stop hey please? i love it please love don't it. feed him uh, he's bad enough as it is whoa yeah i, I think it's, it's entirely reasonable that we'll see uh potentially pat make the move nice at the end of the season i i think he's showing some real quality in there again at a very young age swiss in the rising goal song says reese Yikes. Yeah, that's that's for Zeus Zoinks in the chat with a nice yar. Uh you want to give Zoinks a yar back? Do you want to? I, I just did yar. You want to give, give him a yar? He's done it. That's all right. Zoinks, you see, I'm not gonna say anything. If anyone sends in a super chat, uh, I think we can get Owen to uh yar back at him. No, you can't make promises on my behalf, Max. That's what we do for you. Yeah, but I don't do that. No, you can't flip it, mate. Max is buying pretzels, I just heard. Did someone say Max is buying pretzels? Reese, you son of a... Max is buying pretzels, anyway, I just heard that. Moving, okay. moving on, moving on ever so swiftly. Um, okay, so we have the Pat Mar boy talk. Um, we've had guys who are coming back in. <laughs> the, the, que the question then does become, right, Fuenmayar, as he's working his way back in, is it as simple as just a center back swap out or what? For my own, I don't know if for my own starts because that's that's the I don't thing. know if for my own starts at the minute. I genuinely don't know. Well, let, 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 let's break this down. You're assuming that you may not rush him back into the starting lineup, right? Just because of injury working his way back. Let's say he's fully fit, he's worked up, he's ready to go. Out, like, is there a scenario? Is there a path forward for him to starting in? Because we were kind of talking about this. 
Where would you either shift? Who would you drop? They, they made it a tough time for this crew. The back line, they haven't been out of this world spectacular, but I don't think there's like a guy who has been a noticeably weak link and who you drop. If I'm going to nominate anyone, maybe it's Mo Traore, who has been quote unquote, maybe not up to the but same level. He's sticking with this but, back and four, that, and you open up more difficulties. And, and that's, my, that's my point. Four Maior isn't mobile enough, to, I think, to be that that's guy. My, that's my point. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, it wouldn't be a like for like swap. I don't know. You know where that would have to replace either Pat Marboy or John Stenberg, and I don't see that happening. I agree. I Um, tend to agree. Look, I think Alejandro Juan Mayor was phenomenal in the running last year. Of course, we saw issues earlier in the season. Um, (laughs) Max is just finally catching up on the chat. No, chat. Would you like some Marjo? Oh no! (laughs) Gotta love it. Oh no! Um, But I, I, I just I don't know if Juan Mayor at the moment is someone you'd start. I mean, and that's no disrespect for him. Disrespect to him at no. all. I think that overall, you are right. No one stands above as being an easy like for like replacement. Got to ride with the hot hand. Swip, swap him in there. Yeah, I don't disagree, man. Um, yeah, it's it, it's a tough one. I think, like again, this is like the this is the like kind of embarrassment of riches of depth that Rising has now kind of culminated where we were we would love for this like at this point like last season multiple injuries kind of makeshift at times like but no this is it's it's not a bad problem to have so okay defense could be a lot worse if this is the worst uh, kind of problem dilemma we're having could be way worse the midfield we move on to them they're a Uh, kind of a a complicated bunch uh, this is a very uh, complicated bunch because here's kind of the way you set it out renzo has kind of had some I wouldn't say up and down performances. I think at his worst, he's been maybe a bit off, off snuff, but I think he's been a pretty, pretty decent. I would say give him average to above average in pretty much every single match. I can't see him having a match where he's absolutely wrong footed, but there's been maybe one, one and a half matches where he's absolutely starred and gone out of this world. Other than that, it's his classic Renzo's and Brown performances where you haven't heard much about him. Uh, and I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing. You have Julio, who has really kind of come in I think he offers a much more progressive option. He yes, he's still learning. Yes, there are times where, okay, he might give the ball away and stuff like that, but we've seen within the passing maps from both the eye, you know, the eye test kind of proves it as well as the analytics that he's just a more progressive option. He's a guy who is at least willing to try things, right? We see Bendo's Bluebird in the chat. He needs more game time. Agree. That's kind of where we stand. Then you kind of have everyone else. Jose Andres Hernandez, again, you know what you've expecting from him. He's a guy who he's going to retain possession, but it's not going to advance the, the ball JP very forward. We barely see. And that's the other part of like, that's something that when you kind of look at how he was doing within League One last year and every all the reports coming out and everything about it, you're thinking, okay, sure, it was in a quote-unquote lower league, but it's a guy who he was crushing it for them. And I'm surprised that he hasn't had more of a crack at it. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. Yeah, we'll be kind of where I leave it. You know what, though? We're gonna, in the true style of the midfield, Max, I'm going to toss it over to you. Sideways over to you. You going to toss it back? Sideways back over to me. <laughs> I don't, there's no one behind me. Okay. Um, <laughs> nice. Right. Yeah. This team has struggled at times, I think, in progressing the ball to the midfield. It's been quite negative. It's been quite slow. It's been really one of the concerns is that the engine in this team in the midfield doesn't really exist. Moving, a, losing, a, missing a few pistons. Um, They've been quite sideways, backwards, negative, slow. Um, And that's caused issues. It makes you predictable. It makes you, forces you too far out wide on times. Um, it makes the side to side movement more difficult. Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, when you add a, a, you know, Julio, I think is a a bit more aggressive in there. He's making more things happen. You're right. You look at the numbers, you look at the eye test. He is someone who's going to attempt more forward balls. He's going to cover a bigger space in general, especially in the attack. Um, and and you compare that with some other players we've seen in the midfield over the course of the season, and it is an improvement. Yeah. Um. You you also consider the fact that there's a formational change in the addition of the the number ten in that more central role opens up opportunities for side to side movement that doesn't go through the very slow um midfield on time. So yeah, I I think there's improvement there. I think it's a uh, decent enough. Um. With Julio's addition in there, yeah, I think I, I still am intrigued why, why we haven't seen as much of JP Skiers, but um, agreed. I don't know. Yeah, 
uh, you know, you want to see a bit more dynamism. But I, again, I think I think the midfield is maybe not the reason why rising is kind of in the position as, as they are. I think if you're going to kind of point out, it's kind of leading to, well, that's actually a random comment from Kevin. Azakar is a little lazy tracking back, but for Gabby, it's people are arguing all about around Azekar game. The, yep, and this kind of leads us, uh, us into what you consider the attack. Yes, you know we can lump in the you know the wing backs and one on here can lump in the number tens, whoever's playing number nine, stuff like that. This has been the one where, I mean, we've seen this at points last season. Again, going back to last season, it was kind of just wayward chances and not capitalizing on opportunities. We just haven't seen these opportunities consistently with this team. I think this is the biggest worry. I also think, again, Remy Cabral is a massive game changer, but knowing that he's been battling injuries, knowing that there's a possibility, hey, could come back to, um, excuse me, to the to the PIDs at any at any time in theory. It's uh, a it's, yeah. it's, it's it's a it's something that you want to ride the hot hand and you want to play through him, but it's it's not like a foundational setting and that kind of worries me a bit yeah that's always the worry when you sign a lone player right yeah. there's always the chance don't of fall in love with a lone player they don't say don't fall in love with a lone player because yeah you never know you never know i mean who do we i mean we've seen a couple of guys right we've already had the conversation of we want daria we want to see we want to see a, a significant time with darius panos and and remy cooking all together guys playing off each other that interplay want to see that happening that seems pretty well covered of who we want in those positions. That doesn't seem like it's too much up for interpretation. To me, I'm curious. There's a lot of like disagreement in the chat, a lot of people having different opinions. Who are, in your opinion, not only the first two choice outside backs when they're playing in those positions, but also who would you bring on in their place? We got a lot of options there. Well, when you're talking about wing backs in what formation? If you're playing a back four, you're not really playing wing yeah. backs. more wingers. In let's that let's case. Let, let's go let's go with when they're playing three in the back. Who do you want the set wing backs? Um, to good question. I think Rito, you need out there. We've seen his link up play with Panos. Um, we've seen the fact that I think he's got enough to him that he can play that role. Okay. Um, maybe then you go with Gabby on the other side as the first choice. It's not that Azuka hasn't been bad at times in the attack. It's that. Gabby, as as Kevin did actually mention, I think um, Gabby's a little bit better sometimes in the defense. He's more, he puts in more of a shift. Bit, yeah, yes, right. Yes, and agreed. that's, again, just the ability to do that is important. Um, yeah, that's what I think on that one. Okay, so we got in that. In terms of if you're doing it back, back four, four, so you're playing them as wingers. I'd probably say if you're doing a back four, so you're talking of your front kind of four almost, you number 10, which would be Panos. Your two wingers, maybe. What for Mallor on the? He was on the left, wasn't he? Yeah. And it's not ideal. I understand it. Rito probably on the right. Sorry. Uh, uh, one more time, Alan. Shut up. Rito on the right. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Put Cabral now. up top. Power I think he's where you look right now. Um, but yeah, I I feel as though it's uh interesting one. Um, there's a lot of movement there that you can do. Um. We have to see. Okay. Okay. I mean, chat, chime in, right? I, it's always kind of nice to take a, a big look of, hey, we've seen, we played a couple of matches this season. How is this team looking? Where do we kind of feel with everything? Like, it's always good to kind of zoom out for a second and put things in perspective. It's a nice exercise, chat. Uh, join in if you guys have any differing opinions and just kind of see where your head's at. Because, you know, me, where my head's at, after I take some OGs, it's pretty darn good. We're kind of floating, as they say, as I'm keeping Kyle on his toes with the graphics. Reese is nodding along with uh, that ad. But, of course, he can't indulge because he has to be 21 years or older, which he is not. But if you are 21 years or older, you can indulge in some delicious OGs brands. Uh, they have... All the different kinds of their gummies. They've got the OG's Naturals available in a sweet clementine. They have the Sleep Edition, the Minis. And, guys, they just released their... RSOs, their pegs, new 1,000 milligram gummy. We're not just talking about the big OGs at 100 milligrams. Add a zero to that. That's what they have now. 1,000 milligrams. 1,000 milligrams. Do you know how high someone would be if they took 1,000 milligrams? how high would you be? I will a not take 1,000 milligrams. That's too much for your boy. But those who may handle it, you can indulge in the 1,000 milligrams. I'm more of a 3 milligram guys. There's 1,000 all the way up here out of screen. And then I'm, I'm down at the nice 
three level, right? Right down here. And it's all good. And oh, geez, brands. They can, you know, when you have a nice sativa, perk you up or a nice, sweet, smooth indica jazz. They got that all for you. OG's Brands. Check them out at ogsbrands.com and follow them across all socials at OG's Brands to find them at a local dispensary near you. You can find them as well. They're going to be out at Buds of Palooza this Friday, Friday, April 19th at Buds of Palooza. Go check out our friends at OG's Brands. Must be 21 years or older to enjoy responsibly. What's your voice change here, man? I what are we doing here? I'm just replicating the sweet, sweet doldrums of an OG's Indica. But if I need to perk right back up, I'm gonna go to Valley Tap Room, have a good time, have a beer. What? Another beer? What? A third beer? What? Owen buying beers? What? Owen buying four peaks at Valley Tap Room? What? Owen's no. buying beers. Damon says it. You heard it. Let's go. Owen's buying beers at Valley Tap Room. Go on over there. Have a good time. By the time they got the two locations in Gilbert and Queen Creek, right? They got the trivia. They have the, um, you know, the karaoke. They have the, the food you can get. They have live music, everything like that. You know, rumor has it. We gotta be planning a little bit of Valley Tap Room one of these upcoming days. But uh, hey, go on over Valley Tap Room. It's a great time. All the different beers, the wine, the wine slushies, all that great stuff. ValleyTapRoom.com and of course on socials at Valley Tap Room. Also, shout out the chat Zoinks saying I have such nice ads. I appreciate that Zoinks. Also, I love the new profile picture. Nice little kitty, little kitty, little Gucci goo. <laughs> What was that, man? What do you mean? I'm petting the cat. I put Mommy B. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I was, oh, uh, no. oh I love in the chat comment. This is nice. Oh, no. Oh, man. And Devin all says you're never buying root beer. Oh, man. This is great. Well, that's because Hendrix said that you're buying root beer. I'm just Shout enjoying I'm just, I'm just, I'm just masquerading this in the chat. I appreciate it. Oh, Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Mom Nick P, yeah. next time I'm doing it, I'll, I'll do that voice from uh, OG's Azri from now on. There we go. Uh, Boom. Okay. Uh, oh, and you want to talk about some Open Cup, don't you? Yeah, we could. We could talk about it in a minute. Um, there's still some stuff going on in today's game. So let's actually, oh, you do? while we wait oh. for a good break in today's games, let's, uh, let's have a look at what's going <laughs> on. So tomorrow in the Wednesday game. One second. So now you won't be disappointed. Get some OGs. If that voice does it for you, just wait until you try it yourself. Wait. You know, uh, try some OGs next time you listen to this pod, and then I'll do the voice then. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, let's have a look, let's have a look though, about the tomorrow games just quickly. Boom. Um, so let's start off with the early kickoffs there. Um, these are all, times all over the Arizona time. Um, oh, I'm going to look at the... Uh, while you're doing that, you 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 read it for it. I'm going to build a little parlay action with our he friends is, at Bedham Gym. He is, he is, he is, he is. Well, you may have to wait. Sometimes they come on a little bit late. This is true. Um, this is true. Be careful with those wins. Richmond Kickers, uh, they're playing Loudoun. Uh, Hearts Athletic, of course, US Championship side against New York City FC 2. Uh, our next pro team still kicking at the moment. Memphis 901 will be playing Miami United of uh, the Open Division. Rhode Island's going to PKs? Uh, it will be. We're going to talk about that in a minute, though, mate. Okay. Don't don't jump. Don't jump. North Carolina FC. They say how high. Carolina Core. Uh, Miami FC also playing South Georgia Tormenta. Those two games kicking off at 4.30. We look at the latter half of the slate on Wednesday. you got Birmingham Legion. We'll be playing Chattanooga Red Wolves. Union Omaha against El Paso Locomotive. Chicago Fire 2 against Indy 11. And FC Tulsa against North Carolina... Col North Colorado Hailstorm will get there eventually. All five o'clock kickoffs, Arizona times. You can tell a lot of these, they're quite east. Um, they are east? They are quite east. I thought you east. said west. Um, and then if we move on, of course, to the, the West Coast games there, you see Monterey Bay <laughs> against the Evan Zeta and Las Vegas Lights against oh, Spokane keep, Velocity. Keep, keep that up, keep that up. Um, those two kicking off at 7.30 tomorrow. Meanwhile, if we have a look what's going on and what's been going on today in the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, latest score after extra time, it's Charlotte Independence 4, Rhode Island FC 4. Lots going on over in uh, Memorial Stadium over in Charlotte in that one. It's been back and forth, back and forth, three all uh, after 90 in that game. Loose City, they went to dispatch Greenville Triumph 3-1 with a lineup that had a lot of their starters in there for Louisville. So, decent result for them. Detroit City with a late winner over a 10-man Michigan Stars mm, team. Detroit yes. also reduced to 10 men okay. in stoppage time. And the latest from 
New Mexico. It's New Mexico United nil. Lubbock Matadors nil. Lubbock Matadors from the Open Division, of course, knocked out. Arizona Monsoon in the first round. And as we look to the late game tonight, 7.30 kickoff Arizona time. It is Oakland Roots from Division 2 USL Championship. They will be playing from NPSL in the Open Division El Farolito. El Farolito have already knocked off Go two professional teams so far this competition. Can they make oh. it a third? No free ads. Can they make it a third? No free ads. Max, it's not a free ad. They're a team. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's less I of a free ad than when you had your bottle of... No comment on what company was on there. Do you there, see it on here? Do you see it on here? You've done it in the past. No. He's done it in the past. Damon, no. back me up here. He's done it in the past. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you saying yeah. yeah to? What are you saying yeah to? Why don't you allow We can't put Do the penalty shit know? out on Davinol. We're not getting, you know, we're not breaking copyright laws and <laughs> streaming stuff that we don't have licenses that one, for. That one soccer team it. named after a uh, food object that you digest and indulge in. Uh, yes, I believe that they mm -hmm. have a very good shot to win. So what, what do we think about the Open Cup? We're the, not, none of us are so Detroit, far. Damon. You're the only one that's Detroit What here. do we think about the Open Cup so far then, Max? Tell us about your thoughts, and I'll keep us updated, by the way, on how this uh, uh, penalty shootout is going as well. What's that now? Yeah, it's a kick off at the moment, the penalty shootout. But... What do you want? What, what do you think about the Open Cup so far? This, 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 this round. Oh, the Open Cup. It's great. I mean, you know, the, this uh, round. I mean, uh, Detroit, uh, the Detroit Michigan Stars game, chaos. Um, unfortunately, yep. didn't, didn't go how we wanted. Um, I mean, you know, Louisville over Greenville. Uh, I'm assuming that finished 2 1, but uh, yeah. 3 1. 3 1. Okay. Yeah. Yep. He wasn't even paying attention. This man doesn't even listen to me. It was 2 1 in the 95th minute. I just minute. read it was 3 1. Oh. Eh. You know, I tune you out. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you know, that's, you know, pretty, pretty typical, is what it is. This shootout, and I'm kind of, we can actually kind of see it from our screen. This pillar is kind of in the way. I kind of get a. I, I got it on. I got it on mine if you want. I, yeah, I want to I get a live commentary, but, uh, you know, it's. I'm not going to lie. I've got it on mine if you want. Like, <laughs> I kind of like, like the fun of not being. You're behind. You're behind on no, what we're, we're saying. No, we're at the same spot. So uh, let's see, little uh, PK action, you know. Of course, again, keep in mind, in fact, folks. I'm ahead, and Charlotte have just scored their oh, first penalty. Keep in mind, folks, Max um, has never missed a PK. So Charlotte in Independence um, take a one nil lead in the first round. We're just giving you live commentary here, pretty much of a <laughs> hit that like button. Watch along. We need you those likes up. Cut, watch we need along. those let's likes go. up. How do we people. feel about? How do we feel about this uh, next penalty taker stepping up now? We don't know who he is. Um, we don't have any commentary on, so we won't again, really be able to tell. Again. It's Albert Dequa stepping up from Rhode Whoa. Island. Albert Dequa is stepping up for Rhode Island right now. This is what we've devolved to. We're talking Open Cup and just kind of like I live think, uh, watch along for Charlotte Independence against Rhode Island FC. Guys, I've never seen anything this exciting. Um, it's, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I think, uh, I think he's going to bear it. You think Dequa's going to put it away? I hope so. Well, up steps Albert Dequa. The whistle goes to the lips. The arm goes out. Here it comes. He's oh! missed. Oh, that's horrible. He's put it wide of the post. Told you, told you miss it. And Charlotte Independence have the advantage <laughs> after one round of penalties. That's poor. Okay. It is. It's not good. And Albert Dequa is a very good player. We've seen what he's done in this league. <laughs> what are we um, doing right now? He, uh, he was, uh, hit, was that like saved? hit that like no, button. Hit that like button. No, it wasn't in the chat. saved, Kevin. I don't see the keeper get anything hit on that, that one. Hit that like button in the chat, people. Um, you, I think he just here? puts it wide, what to be honest. Here? Um, um, what are we doing here? I, I'm just keeping talking. This is fun. I think we should stay on until this game ends. Just chatting right yes, now. It's not going to be long. It's in penalties, you know? Like, it's a couple... It'll keep us still seven. Ka, Ka, uh, Producer Kai, you got any objections to that? Keep it going. Keep My it man. going, he says. We're keeping it going. We're doing you know? what the people want. All right. We're doing what the people want. We'll we are terrible. doing what the people want. Charlotte steps up. Oh, number 11 for Charlotte. And he tucks it in. Woo! Into the corner. It's 2-0 at the moment to Charlotte Independence. Okay. Now, Max, the big thing, of course, coming up on Thursday as we look at this Thursday... The draw for the round of 32 of the U.S. Open Cup. Yeah. Why is the round of 32 important? It's when Phoenix Rising will enter the competition. I think this is a great opportunity between penalties to talk about kind of what we're expecting to see come Thursday. So I'll give you a little bit of a rundown in that one. Teams will be split into groups of four based upon the, uh, you know, uh, the variety of factors each group will it will be geography predominantly however you will find as uh rhode island step up for their second penalty and it's put away uh so it's now two one after two rounds of penalties that each group of four based Could on geography me. will feature one entering mls team one 
entering USL Championship team and two third round winners. So that's going to set up some funky stuff because there's not a lot of Eastern MLS teams that are entering. Okay. In fact, there's only one team that's east of the Mississippi, I believe, that's entering. And obviously, there are a lot of progressing teams that are from quite east. There's not a lot of West third round um, winners, that's correct. likely. That is correct. Um, my best guess for anyone who's intrigued here is, is Charlotte step up for their uh, third penalty. My best guess is that Phoenix Rising are going to get paired up with probably either RSL or Seattle Sounders in their group. As Charlotte Sky it goes way over the oh, crossbar. Gosh. Luis Alvarez. What the heck that was, was that? awful. That was an awful penalty. And all of a sudden, Char uh, Rhode Island are back in this. This is actually a good question from um, Reese. This is a good question from Reese in the chat, and I'm going to amend this. He's asking, is putting a penalty wide worse than what Quejo did? And, oh. also, and, and, and I'll also add skying it. So you have a penalty wide? I think it depends. Skying if it it's or close, a no. failed Panenka? If it's like skied like that, yes. I think that's fair, right? Say that again? If it's close and you miss, no. If it's like miles off like that way, you just skied that one, yes. I think missing wide is. Uh, I think missing Guzera wide. Guzera now stepping up for Rodon, by the way. I think missing wide is worse. I think missing wide is worse because I think it's harder to do versus skying it is objectively just looks worse. It's like I'm skying it is just that. like optically is hilarious. Rhode Island stepping up if now. If you miss looking. wide, you don't laugh. It's just. Wait, did you uh, anyone see the penalty last and night? And he's tucked in. The keeper can't reach it. We are at two all after three rounds of penalties. Reese, keyboard warrior. I've told you I've never missed a penalty once in my life. You don't know. Max, would you put away a penalty in the third round of the Open Cup? Put around first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Give me any position. This yeah, man exactly. is that really convinced that he'll do it right. I well, am. What do I, what do I have to be wrong about? I've never missed. What do you have to be wrong about? I don't know, Max. What What do you have to be wrong about? Um, Normally a lot of things, to be fair. School, um, to, school to you in soccer, buddy. Okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you what, this is this is intriguing. We're, we're keeping going. We're keeping going here, right? Three rounds of penalties down. Okay. Um, The people are getting what they want. You can tell people are enjoying this in the chat. Um, <laughs> this is up stop Charlotte for penalty this number four. A, now and PHX, he tucks it in in the left this corner. This is now PHX rising. Spielman. Open cup. Watch it all. Nick Spielman kind of walks over to the goalkeeper. A little bit of Marvin. A little bit of Marvin after that one. But it's a good penalty. He tucks it away in the left. Um, but yeah, just to go back to that drawer and talking about what I'm expecting from this one. I can't really tell <laughs> you what's going to happen in terms of the third round winners. Because A, we don't know all the third round winners yet. And B... Quite how they're going to choose to m place these teams, I don't know. My best estimate is that somewhere between Rising and Colorado Springs, you're going to have to give out RSL and Seattle. And I think they'll give RSL to Colorado Springs, but I'm not sure. Okay. This is the best guess, by the way. It's not perfect. This is a Sometimes the committee does things that we don't expect. You're stating facts. That's what's happening. I I'm I'm making estimates. This is a, no, this is a fact is what you're expect. trying to say. It's Sh not Shush. <laughs> Cease. Rhode Island score. And it is now, after four rounds of penalties, three all, which means we're, in effect, in sudden death already, Mark Doyle with a penalty there. Hmm. Um, four all. No, three all, sorry, after four rounds. Three Who, all after Who's winning four. this? Give me a number. Give me, give me, give me a team. I'm going to take team, Charlotte, because Charlotte first. You always know what it's like, right? You, you kick first, you have the advantage. Why? Because you're kicking to take a lead. You're not kicking to stay alive. And that's a critical distinction. Yeah. It's harder when you're chasing a game, per se. Right? It's a lot, a lot harder. Although and it is pretty nice. Charlotte like... Independence now for their fifth kick. They're up. The keeper's waving his arms around a little bit. And he skies it. He skies it. Rhode Island can win it on the next penalty. He does. The captain puts it over the crossbar. Clay Dimmock. We've seen a lot of field goals in this uh, penalty in this penalty shootout. Well, it is an old high school American football stadium, I think. Nice. Now that one wasn't as bad as the earlier guy in it, but still, who's going to step up now for Rhode Island? Who is it? I can't tell. I can't tell from this angle. They don't show us a good angle. I don't really know who these players are very well. I think it may be Kevin Vang, but I'm not sure. I think that's an armband. Let me see. Uh, no, no, sure. no, you're, you're... Save! Oh! We move on. Oh boy. What a save from the goalkeeper. This game won't finish. This game has this everything. This game won't finish. This game has everything. I just placed, uh, by the way, I just placed a, uh, a, a bet for 
we have uh, one open cup match that's currently it was at actually halftime. Joe Brito. One open cup match. Hey, cur- Kevin Van came off. One, um, one open cup match currently at halftime. New Mexico United facing Lubbock Matadors SC. Lubbock. I put I put Lubbock Matadors. I have them going for the win. It's nil nil at the moment. Plus Lubbock, 400. Plus 400. Like Ooh, that. why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? New Mexico United halftime can't even score against Lubbock Matadors. Wow. There we go. Now, Charlotte Independence stepping up. Penalty number six. Of course, both sides have scored three so far. Charlotte Independence looking to edge in front in sudden death. I've been, you're, you're, I'm, I'm hearing from Kevin you need to be a pundit for Monday Night Football. Apparently so. Slow run up and top corner. Ooh. It was just like a two-step kind of run up. Not much to it, but enough. Hmm. And he places it so well. Okay, okay. There's no Ma- stopping can you that. Give a larger screen so look, I can look see at this. the darn thing. Look at the, look at the oh, finish. That's, that's pretty that nice. That is top bins. Max Simpson no does question not use the top bins on a, on a, on a PK, that but that's takes pretty good. Some, that takes some stones in that one. Stop um, turning it. I want to see it. As now they move on to who's stepping up for what is the one that will be keeping them alive if he You don't want Rhode it. Island to be... Marooned on there, you know what I mean? You don't. Here's the question. Can Rhode Island keep their hopes alive? Oh. Yes, they do. Okay. Keeper probably should have reached up here's, on here's that one. It was Clay it. Hulstad who stepped I'm gonna, up I'm gonna, I'm gonna predict it. Max Stradamus, as they say. <clears throat> Max Stradamus. <clears throat> Charles, or excuse me, Charles. Wow, no, that's not it. Charlotte is gonna miss their PK. It's gonna get blocked. Keepers diving to the right. Rhode Island down yeah, the middle. He was not taking a winner. penalty yet. If keeper. I'm not mistaken. The Prince keeper. Sadie playing, by the way, mm. for uh, uh, Phoenix Rising Football Club legend, according to Reese. I'm, I'm not sure I'd agree with is that. It, is it gonna Anton Sorensen stepping up now. Be saved to the keeper's right. Penalty it's number be seven. Saved to the Max is right. going saved to the keeper's right. Keeper's waving his arms around here now. He's Sorensen steps up. Sorensen... Nope, goes the opposite direction Told and you. puts it past Told the keepers. Told you it was, it is opposite. It was the opposite. Again, no. it's advantage Charlotte. It's the same thing. Can Rhode Island keep themselves alive again? This is pretty electric. 5-4 at the moment to Charlotte Independence. We're in the seventh round. There are so many of you of watching. Penalties. I can't believe there are so many people here still, and we love We're this. We're just having fun. This we is would... the Open Cup. This is what it's about. We would love you to hit the like button. I really would appreciate Smash that. Smash that like button. Smash that like button, please. Please do so. All right. Up steps. Gabby Alves. If you stop, if you, can you angle it so I can see Gabby the darn Alves. thing? Gabby Alves. Well, I'm trying to look at my own notes as well, like players and stuff. Oh, my gosh. Gabby Alves stepping up for Rhode Island. Oh, he's a lefty. He's played the entire 120 minutes, the Brazilian. Oh, that's a curl. It's a curler if I ever see one. Let's see where he goes with this one. Little hesitation Whoa! and it's safe. Saved. Charlotte Independence will move on. Rhode Island, not the best of penalties. It was quite central, it felt. The keeper able to get his body behind it. And that's enough. The lights go off. They're celebrating. They're having fun in Charlotte. There we go. Charlotte Independence have Good. knocked out Rhode Island. That's it's the US Open Cup. Good Charlotte. Rock on. Right, we're ending the stream. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, no, appreciate everyone joining us here on the PHNX Rising podcast. Oh boy, uh, this was this was a doozy of a of a show. Of course, you can follow us in the meantime at PHNX underscore underscore Rising because double the underscore, double the us wasting double the, time double watching the open cup. cup. Penalty double Let's the go. Open cup. Double the open we love the open cup. Well done, open cup. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Max David Simpson. You can follow Owen on Twitter at OJ Evans eighteen. You can follow Statlacky Reese on Twitter at Reese eleven underscore. You can follow Kyle behind the Mac at K Coop Sports. You can follow Damon Dog, who made a cameo appearance on Twitter at Damon D A double G Ruru. You can follow Jacob Franklin. Um. Uh, he probably has like uh, one of those like home security systems, like a ring or something like that. You might be able to. You might this be able. This is getting very is this a close social to network. To that might be a social networking C- thing. C Smacks. Anyway, uh, you can you can follow him at uh, 
You can email him at jacob at gophnx.com. Send him a nice note. There you go. We're not putting his email out there now. Oh, well, I already said it. Oh, well, I already said it. Hey, hey, for something to happen. No, Be nice to the man. Send him a nice note. He's a He's good guy. He's not that bad to you, man. He's a great guy. I said, exactly. I said, stop him bullying him. I said, th- I said, thanks, he's- guys. Max is doing a thousand milligrams. Uh, yes. I think I'm not uh, coming on this podcast for a month if I do a thousand milligrams. I will be sleeping. Uh, but that's what we're going to do shortly. Um, yeah, we'll be back on Thursday, guys, 6 p.m., the usual show. But until then, it's a beautiful game. It's way more beautiful when we get nice PK shootout live watch along <laughs> on the Open reason. Cup. Let's go. Good night. Y'all silly like the mayor.